Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing okay. Hope you had a great week and I hope you're looking forward to your weekend. Thanks for stopping by and checking out uh, my channel. What we do here is we do a bunch of ETF reviews. Um, I look at different covered call strategies. I reveal my dividend income, talk about different uh, uh, ETFs and closed end funds, things like that. So if that's in interests you, please subscribe, uh, comment down below, like, share, do all that good stuff. I would really appreciate it. Um, all you guys that have used the Amazon link, I appreciate it. Uh, that does make a difference. And I'm going to roll out a uh, surprise on that uh, aspect as far as uh, YouTube income is concerned. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit exciting. Not, I mean, it's going to be exciting. Um, to see how uh, YouTube income and Amazon income grows and I'm going to share that with you and what uh, I plan to do with the money that comes in for you guys watching these videos so I appreciate that and if you uh, want to uh, contribute you know just watch the ads um, also down below is the Amazon link um, if you would use the Amazon link and you know, do whatever normal purchases you would do in the shopping session. Uh, after you click the Amazon link, uh, it would give me a small commission on qualified purchases and uh, you would contribute to um, the GW ETF channel RV fund. OK, more details on that coming up. So I would appreciate that. Uh, thank you guys for joining me today. What we're looking at is a dividend growth fund uh, a core holding dividend growth fund you know i always talk about core holdings, satellite holdings um, some of the etfs i cover may only should only probably be a small portion of your portfolio uh, the one i'm uh, reviewing today could uh, possibly fit a large portion of a diversified etf portfolio and we'll just get right into it. Which one are we talking about today? We are talking about DGRO, ticker symbol DGRO. And that's the iShares Core Dividend, Dividend Growth ETF. And what this one is, is a dividend-weighted, non-leveraged, enhanced strategy equity ETF with the benchmark index of the Morningstar U.S. Dividend Growth Index, and we're going to take a look at that and see what Morningstar U.S. Dividend Growth Index is all about. And we'll see right here uh, construction rules for the Morningstar Index. It's designed to provide exposure to U.S.-based securities with a history of uninterrupted dividend growth. The index is a subset of the Morningstar U.S. Market Index, a broad market index representing 97% of U.S. equity market capitalization. It is a benchmark consisting of securities that 1. Pay qualified dividends. 2. Are screened for a minimum of 5 years of uninterrupted annual dividend growth. And 3. Have a significant margin to continue growing those dividends so those are all uh, positives it's just not uh, whoever pays the highest yield is going to be included they have to pass certain screens they have to be growing their dividend for that certain period of time and then they have to be healthy enough to be able to continue to increase those dividends so let's see uh, how are the stocks what are the stock rules? So the stock's dividend must be qualified income. So for example, real estate investment trusts are excluded and most likely so are master limited partnerships. This one is kind of strange to me. I'm not quite sure how this, how to make of this. Um, it says securities indicated dividend yield must not be in the top 10% of the universe defined by the above criteria. Indicated dividend yield is calculated by taking the product of the most recent dividend per share paid and the announced frequency divided by the current price. So 
if I'm reading that, I've read it quite a few times already, and it looks like um, not to be in the top 10%, so they get rid of the really high yielders is what I'm hearing from that. Um, Because usually high yield uh, will normally say, you know, unstable or unsustainable. Next is the stock must have a positive consensus earnings forecast and a payout ratio less than 75%. Payout ratio is forward looking and calculated by the forward 12 month indicated dividend divided by the forward 12 month consensus earnings per share forecast. So they look at uh, what analysts are saying, uh, what the estimates of the company should be in the, for the next 12 months, and then they figure out what that payout ratio would be if they continued uh, paying the dividend they currently pay. Let's see, the, uh, the stock must be currently paying dividends and have a at least five years of uninterrupted annual dividend growth. Dividend growth condition is considered met if either the current annualized dividend rate or the trailing 12 months aggregated dividend increased from the previous to the current reconstitution date. In the case of a spinoff, the spinoff company will remain in the index but will be will require continued dividend growth starting within the next year. The parent company will not require dividend growth in the spinoff year where year is the 12 month period between annual index reconstitutions. If a current index constituent fails to raise its dividend but does not decrease its dividend and execute share repurchases in the preceding 12 months resulting in a net decrease in its shares outstanding, the constituent will remain in the index. So if they stay flat, if the dividend stays flat, that stock will have to buy back shares to increase their earning per share. And, and if they don't do that, they will be, bo- they will be booted from the index. So what does the DGRO have in it? Well, it has uh, $11.85 billion in assets. Currently has a uh, distribution yield of 2.5%. Net expense ratio of 0.08, so pretty good. Um, And we'll go here to the portfolio composition and check out what makes it tick. And we'll go down here and we'll see it has a total of 420 holdings, which is most likely 419 and one cash. Uh, The top 10 has 27.44% and the the 409 other stocks hold 72.56%. 97 percent, almost 98 percent in North America and almost 2 percent in Europe. Uh, This is mostly large cap. You have almost 88% in large cap, 8% in mid cap, and three and a quarter in small cap. And Morningstar rates this as a large cap value fund. So who are the top 10? Well, the top 10, uh, I like the top 10. It's got all the heavy hitters. Um, You have Apple at 4%. Microsoft at a little over 3%, Johnson & Johnson just under 3%, Verizon just under 3%, JP Morgan 2 and 3 quarter percent, Procter & Gamble at just over 2.5%, Pfizer at just over 2.5%, Chevron Corp at just under 25 I have, I have a feeling when this thing goes to rebalance that Chevron will no longer be in this index. Uh, Home Depot at 2% and Merck at just under 2% as well. So uh, I like the weighting of this ETF. You have 19% in technology, 18.5% in financials, 16% in healthcare, 11 in consumer staples, 10, almost 10.5% 10 in industrials, 7 in consumer discretionary, 5% in utilities, uh, 4.6% in communications, 
3.53% uh, in energy, 2.62% in materials, and 0.01% in real estate. They said they would uh, exclude real estate investment trusts, but this must be some sort of management company. Um, I didn't search for it. With that little bit, it's not that big of a deal. So we'll go over here and we'll look at the key stats and we'll look at turnover. Since this is only done once a year, um, there shouldn't have much turnover here. Let's check it out. Go to the key stats. Oh, wow. It's a little higher than I thought. Annual turnover ratio of 24%. So that means, wow, that's a lot because that's 420 holdings basically a fourth of those so 105 roughly holdings were taken out of the ETF and replaced with new companies so that's quite high so let's take a look at uh, the dividend growth here I had seeking alpha up here on the dividend growth but it it was a little funny uh, it didn't look right and um, you got to be careful with Seeking Alpha. You got to be careful with everybody because not every website gets the site, gets the data right. And uh, so I went on to buyupside.com and they have a pretty good dividend growth rate calculator. And uh, I punched in DGrow into their calculator and I wanted to look at the last five years. And it says it has a growth rate, annualized growth rate of 9.32% a year. So, and a growth rate, average growth rate of 11, but annualized 9.32%. So what that means is your uh, dividend is going to grow on average. Well, actually the average is 11. It's going to grow on average 11% per year. So... Uh, if it pays a dollar the next year, it should be 11% higher or a dollar and 11 cents. That's just, that's not the actual number, but just giving you an example. So let's take a look at how DGrow did um, against the S&P 500 over the lifetime. We'll chart $10,000 invested. This uh, fund has only been around, I think, since 2014. So we'll take a look at it here. And it didn't do too bad. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are looking at dividend ETFs and most of them do not uh, beat the S&P 500. They just don't. Uh, but this one came pretty close. You got DGrow since June 12th of 2014. You had a total return of 90%. Average total annual total return of 10.89%. That's with dividends reinvested versus the S&P 500. Total return of 103.34 with an average annual of 12.11. And just looking at this chart over here, looks like uh, DGrow didn't fall as far as the S&P. That's interesting. So what do you think of this core dividend ETF? I like it. Um, I it would fit a good core uh, with some satellite holdings around it. Like this one doesn't hold real estate, so maybe if you think you should have exposure to real estate, you can have this ETF and maybe another real estate ETF or a couple of individual stock holdings to to make up the difference of this one not holding real estate. So give me your thoughts down below. Hope you enjoyed. Like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Use the Amazon link if you would, please. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye. I am not a financial advisor. The information contained in this video is for entertainment and informational purposes only. It is not intended to be investment advice. Please seek a licensed professional for any investment, tax, or legal advice. Thank you.